Hello and welcome to the studio where we paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales. I'm doing slightly, something slightly different today. I'm going to be showing you the whole process of what I go through. Now, you can see I've got a 60 by 40 centimetre canvas there. Um, actually, I'm working on. Now, I went on a bike ride or cycle ride um, the other week and I went through the fields and I, I was standing at the gate and I was looking at the, all these hay bales and um, that's where the ladybug come from as well. Um, I sat in the field at my lunch and it, it was a fantastic day in, in all in all. But I did a sketch and I wanted to show you um, the sketch that I got here. There you go. There's the sketch. And that's the sketch I did on site in situ. Um, as you can see, it's, it's a basic sketch. I was standing a year like that. And this is the view I could see. I could see uh, hay bales in the field. Uh, I could see the trees in the background, a lovely sky. There was a very, very um, lightly filled sky with clouds. In fact, it was mostly blue. And I got all these lovely weeds coming up here. And I thought it would be great if I actually put that on to canvas. As you can see, it's a, just a basic sketch on canvas. All I've done there is um, use a pencil, an ordinary pencil, about a HB. And I've just roughly sketched out um, the design from my, my sketch. Uh, and it's a pre-primed canvas, so it doesn't add any gesso, which I will be putting gesso on it shortly. So I shall take you through that process. Um, if you want to skip ahead um, and you know how to do all this, then fine, just use this time code there and skip to the point where I start the painting. Anyway, have fun and um, let's get started. So what I need to do now is decide what ground color ground and i'm going to be using for this particular canvas now i'm just going to put my hat down by there um because it's going to contain a lot of greens i thought it would be a good idea if i made up some sort of um maybe a yellowy ochre type of background so i've got myself a little plastic container there now i made some of my homemade gesso um and as you said you can see the the recipe for that in the icards um, first of all, what I'm going to do is just get a small amount of yellow ochre. Just drop a small amount of yellow ochre into the container there. And I'm just going to pour a little bit of my gesso in. Like that. And because I make my own gesso, I don't worry if there's any wastage. So I'm just going to get a brush. And I'm going to mix that together like this. It's very simple. This is how you can make a nice easy ground. And you just mix that in. I don't want anything too white. Here we are. There it goes. It started to come together. It started to come together. There you go. So we've got a nice, a nice ground there now. Okay, let me just clean off my, my brush. And this is a process I go through every single lesson. Um, okay, so I need a brush now to put this on I'm just going to pick up uh, just an ordinary household brush there we are you can use household brushes or you can use my brushes that are, you'll find online and I'm just going to lightly go over the canvas with this ground there's two reasons for this one it's going to decrease uh, degrease the surface and going to give us a lovely painting surface so we shouldn't have any problems when we paint over this. Two is going to take away the whiteness of the canvas um, because it won't blind us and it won't. We can see midtones better that way, and it just makes for peace of mind because there's nothing worse than when you're painting along and you find your paint starts to separate or you get orange peel um, that means you've got little dots appearing on your paint and you're thinking why isn't this working it also helps with the flowability of paint because if you don't gesso a canvas you'll find that your paint not only will it not flow as well on a nice clean surface but it won't it takes longer to dry as well so it, it because you're actually sealing the surface again the, the paint is not going to absorb into the canvas. You're going to find that you've got a little bit more working time with your paint. And I shall be talking about working time with paint as we progress with this. So just continue to do that. 
allow that to dry then for a good 10 to 15 minutes and then we can start with the actual underpainting of this scene there you go so I shall see you when it's finished <laughs> Okay, so let's have a quick look at the brushes that I'm going to be using. There's a few of my foliage brushes that I sell on the website along with a blending brush. There's a script liner in there and there's a few short flats, a few detail brushes and a couple of others which I will explain as I go along. Um, I'm using my medium mix formula along with some flow improver and there in those little pots there. Okay, so we've got some hookers green. We've got some Naples yellow, some yellow ochre and some mid yellow and we've also got some ultramarine blue, a bit of burnt umber, Mars black and titanium white. So there's the colours that we're going to be using today on this lesson and um, you can find all the brushes and the mediums at www.clive5art.co.uk So thank you very much and let's just crack on with the painting. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time And don't forget to click subscribe Right, I'm back in the studio. It's been about 15 minutes. I just had a cup of tea and a sandwich. <laughs> so this is it. This is the painting. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up... Um, let me have a look. Let's have a look at a, a decent brush that I could use. I think I'm just going to use uh, a size 20. There we are. This is just a size 20 short flat. I'm just going to moisten that in a little bit of water. Because the last thing you want to do is go straight into blue. Which I'm going to do with a dry brush. Because first thing that paint's going to do is going to soak straight into the bristles. So always moisten your brush a little bit first. There we are. So get a bit of blue onto your brush. And some white onto the other end like that. So it's just a little bit of white and some blue white and blue okay so let's let's get started let's get started i'm gonna just put some blue into the sky like this now if you find that your paint is dragging just a little bit get one of the mr bottles like that this is this this is sold on the website as well add in a little bit more white to your brush and just get that sky in. It was a lovely colour. Blue of the sky. So I'm just adding some white. I'm not too worried about my tree line. Because I've got my reference drawing. So I know roughly what they look like. I've also taken some photographs as well. But unfortunately um, this on my iPhone. My iPhone's the other side of the studio. <laughs> so I can't really use that. So I'm just going to go from memory. Sometimes it's better to do that I think. Sometimes it's better to do that. Very simple. Sky. Get a little bit of blue down there as well because if there's any gaps in the trees then that blue will show through. It's blending that through like that. Again, a bit more white, touch of blue. Let's get some sky over there. I'm sitting on a funny angle, so I'm actually stretching across the paint, <laughs> which is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. I'm just going to adjust my camera. So, um, yeah, when you were, when you were painting, obviously try and sit square in front of your your easel because that makes life a lot easier for yourself. But. I'm filming, so I, you, you need to see over my shoulder. And thank you very much for coming into the studio today. It's uh, actually nice to see you here. Um, as you know, I've been on a fitness drive lately, so I've lost a bit of weight. I've still got a little bit more weight to go. And I've been having a lot of people concerned, saying, Clive, you don't want to lose any more weight. You're looking fine. Um, it's a health thing, basically. Um, I've made a, a, a life decision to get down to... Um, my correct weight as set out by the National Health Service in the UK, which is um, 
around about 12 and a half stone, which is acceptable as far as health is concerned for um, your body mass index and stuff, which I don't really believe in the body mass index, index myself because um, people like Alan Schwarzenegger are, are, are class as obese, but they carry in a lot of muscle. So it's, it, it's irrelevant, really. But I want to be healthy, and I'm going to get down to 13 stone in weight, and I think that's quite a nice place to be as far as my health is concerned because I'm out of risk then of diabetes and all this other stuff that comes with being overweight. Now, if, if you're overweight, then... You know, I'm not judgmental by any any means, but um, I was I wasn't very well, and um, I made a life choice, and I'm happy. Okay, but anybody wanting to try and uh, lose a little bit of weight, then I'm actually joined Weight Watchers, and I've been with Weight Watchers now for a few months, and it seems to be working for me. So just give them a try if you want to. Who knows? You might be pleasantly surprised. So I'm just putting a few little clouds here and there. Just I don't know if I'll be able to see these, but I'm not going to spend too much time on them. And I've been enjoying. I started walking the dog a lot more, and Molly started losing weight and puffing, <laughs> and then I went out and got a push bike. So. That's where this has come from because it's it's inspired me to cut the to have little trips around on the push bike and I thought well I can do with all this and I can take photographs and I can have sandwiches in the field on a nice sunny day and I'm not looking forward to the winter months but there you go <laughs> who knows what's going to happen in the winter because I certainly don't right it's enough of that I'm going to wash that brush. And don't forget, this is just an underpainting stage, so I'm not expecting miracles from this at the moment. Um, I'm going to pick up one of my medium size um, foliage brushes, and these are available on the website at www.cly5art.co.uk. Um, now, I got some pre made green there, which I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to, and a little bit of black just to darken it down. And I'm just going to try this in. Like that. And just a matter of just blocking out. My easel is quite loose, isn't it? <laughs> blocking out some shapes with this foliage brush and this makes for easy painting and also gives you that leaf like patterns a bit more hooker's green a bit more burnt ember i'm just changing this up a bit now i'm making it a little bit browner than darker there we go dark let's get a bit more black to it because down here is, it's going to be quite dark down here I noticed some hay bales there just block out using a few different shades I can use it you're just using a little bit of burn dumber now on my brush as well just trying to get that darkness in 
Now I'm not expecting um, this painting to be over detailed because I don't do detail. I'm, if you if you followed me before, you notice I don't do photorealism. Uh, I don't believe in it myself personally. It's not my type of style, but I I just like the the representation um, paintings, a bit like um, Gainsborough's and stuff like that. You know when he, when he was painting his trees and things. I just want that representation of trees and things. And we'll see how this looks at the end, because I never never know what this is going to look like. When you're painting grass like this and trees and things, it's all about contrast. So just bear that in mind. Just going to go a little bit greener than dark there. That's the edge of the field. Again, just going around that hay bale. I know Monet painted a lot of hay bales in his time. He had a fascination with haystacks, actually, not hay bales. But if he was alive today, I'm sure he'd be painting hay bales. <laughs> Okay, get some brown, a bit more because green, a little bit more black into that. There was a fantastic tree um, that I noticed, and it was all rotten, and and that. And I want to try and incorporate that as well. And there was a, I noticed there was a bit of light coming through, so I'm not gonna. cover all that but there I want a little bit of light coming through there playing with that yeah so that doesn't look too bad so far I'm gonna do a, a, a little trick with this in a minute now here we want to let's just get these hay bales in situ so I'm just gonna put that little brush in some water in a minute I'm picking up a, a small a short flat this is only a small one I'm gonna mix a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of black together because I want to get these hay bales in. Now what I've noticed with these hay bales were that even though they're grass and they're quite um, yellowish um, I noticed when I looked at them that the shadow underneath um, is, is quite a, like a brown a brownie shadow. So what I, what I thought I would do when I painted this and is I'm gonna put the undercoat in dark and I'm going to paint start painting lighter so the undercoat underpainting of this is going to look quite strange because it's going to be quite dark but you understand that painting sometimes involves a lot of layers and we got to get these layers to marry well in order for them to so we need to get we built painting light to dark is what I'm trying to say I just picked up some green by mistake then it doesn't matter there we go I'm trying to paint in with the shape so I'm not painting flat like that I'm not painting flat I'm trying to paint with the shape of the of the actual ale bale itself. A little bit of black, a little bit of it's gonna be darker down there because it's in shadow. 
So it's just establishing the shape at the moment. I've done uh, a few trips. Um, a couple of the trips that I've done, the cycling trips that I've done, uh, are actually in the iCards there. So please click them if you want to go along and join me on a cycling trip. Um, and please, um, that's a new channel I've got. So if, if I would ask it that you subscribe just to help me get that up off the ground. That would be really brilliant. So what I'm going to do now is act actually get a bit of burnt ember, just a touch of yellow to it. I just want to lighten this color up a bit like that a bit more of a like a raw sienna type just to give me a difference on the other edge there and um, there are others on the editing suite as well which i haven't got to yet so i got i visited a castle a local castle i visited a church um i've got mines to, to visit a lake this that's close to me that i used to go fishing on so And I, the, the summer is slowly coming to an end. It will be in a, in a couple of months. And I'm, I need to get out and do some videoing. And hopefully, by the time this video goes out, I'll be on holiday. <laughs> and um, I'll be visiting a country called Mallorca. And I'm going to be seeing if I can take some photographs there of... Um, the sea and things like that and some interesting things I don't know what what yet but we will find out and I'll turn that into a, a lesson as well so at the moment I'm just underpainting and I, I love this um, this part of the the process I find it um, very therapeutic in fact so I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to this one, a touch of white. Because there's one there. And there's going to be one there. And there's one there. And there's one there, just off the canvas. You can just see the edge of it. I thought that would make an interesting. Thought that would make an interesting thing there. There's another one there, I think. Let's fill that in. There we go. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to put any more over here because I just want the eye to come to this side of the canvas. That's, that's the idea anyway. Um, okay, so again, I'm going to put that in the water. So now I'm picking up um, just a long-handled bristle brush. Um, and I'm gonna get some. Um, I'm gonna get some yellow, and add the smallest amount of black to that. A bit more yellow. Black and yellow, because Mars black has got blue in it. It, can, it makes lovely, makes lovely greens. In fact, so I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre to it as well. I want that greeny yellowy green type of color I don't want it too light yet because all I'm doing is 
underpainting this. And I'm going to brush it in just like that, picking up a bit of yellow. Just get a touch of white. Just get a touch of white on my. Brush. Because this grass is, hasn't wrong, long been cut, so it's not going to be as luscious as you would think. So I'm going to just add a little bit of yellow over there to that colour. And it's all, it's all, it's been cut, so it's, it's not flat, you know, it's, it's all like, it's all like that. It's all, all sticking up. It comes a little bit darker as we come to the foreground. I'm going to start leaving little bits of um, grass showing through. I'm going to go into hooker's green now. I, I, I want to leave a bit of canvas showing, I meant to say, not grass. There's reasons for that. Now as I'm coming towards the, the foreground, I'm just leaving a, a few gaps in the painting. Getting a bit darker. Because there's going to be shadows and things along there. I'm just going to wet down my canvas like that just to allow the paint to, to slide a little bit, picking up some of this colour that I originally used up there. I'm just cleaning my brush off now as I come down towards the bottom of the canvas like that. I'm going to pick up a bit of paint and a bit of kitchen roll. Okay, so let's get a bit more yellow up there. building up a couple of these other colors that we've added in on this side. So we've established that there's a, a shadow coming off there. So there's going to be a little shadow coming off this one as well. Again, I'm just going to get some hunkers green, a little bit of yellow. Some yellow ochre. to change the flavour up. T 
such a flow improver. You see how that makes a difference. See how it runs quite smoothly there. Again, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this um, Naples yellow now to bring that in there. bit of Naples yellow down there and that's all we need to do now as you can see several parts of that are wet now I could get the hair dryer on that and dry it but I don't want to do that so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go away for about 30 minutes and then I'll come back and hopefully the paint will be dry. I'd rather do that than try and hair dryer it because um, I do want to um, sell this particular painting. So um, I need to make sure that all the layers are completely dry before I continue. Even the clouds are still a bit wet. So, And that's the important thing. Don't always use the hair dryer unless you really need to. And um, I don't need to because I've got all day. So um, I shall I shall be back in about 30 minutes. I'm back. Yeah, it's been about 30 minutes, actually. A nice cup of tea. <laughs> As you can see, it, it's still a little bit, it's still a little bit wet there. That is dry to touch, but I know underneath that paint is going to be loose. But, you know, I haven't got the time to wait for that now. So now I'm back in the studio. So let's have a look. I've got a, a short flat. This is a size 20 again. Um, and I'm just thinning that down, a little bit of blue down with, this is the ultramarine blue, thinning that a little bit down with my medium mix, because I can do that. I just add a little bit of white to it, just a little bit of white to it, and that's a nice wash. And what I'm going to do with this wash now, is I'm just going to go over the entire sky area, like this. And I'm going to come down into those trees like that. You might be wondering, why are you doing that? Well, I just want to hide any little bits of raw canvas that I haven't painted with a hint of blue. So it looks like there's a little bit of blue coming through. Ba 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 boom, so blue. <laughs> those in England would know what that means. Okay, so I'm just getting that in there. And not only that, it started to just make those trees just hide a little bit into the background it's just fading them away a little bit not a lot but just enough there we are so we had a nice blue sky there maybe i can add a little a few more clouds into that in a second now i've established where those trees are we know where the sky is Blue skies shining on me, nothing but blue skies, can I see? Okay, so let's get a little bit of blue. I'm just going to make it a little bit more opaque in there, like that, and down there as well. Just got a little bit of a blue colour coming through. I'm just going to use the rest of my paint now, just over the rest of the trees like that. It's just going to make out a little bit bluer over there. Okay, I think we just wash that out very quickly. The other thing I want to do now when I got the same brush is just go into this yellow ochre. It's a bit thinner now. It's a little bit thinner, a little bit thinner. Again, I'm just going to put in a couple of lines like that. Let's get a little bit yellow. 
Let's get a little bit of yellow. This is quite a thin paint now. And a bit of yellow ochre. Going over that green there like that. And just continue to do that down there. I don't know if you can hear Molly bargain, but she's uh, making a bit of a racket out there this morning. We got that Naples yellow colour coming in. There, like that bit more green down there all we're doing now is just building up some textures and well not so much textures but light on this grass you're not going to paint every individual blade of grass it's virtually impossible so what you try and do is build up just contrasting tones and don't forget that all the paintings you paint are viewed from a distance they're not viewed this close they're not viewed this they, they're viewed a fair old distance away in fact I think it's about six feet that they recommend you view a painting from so if you go into any gallery in any part of the world you you go and have a look at the old masters like the Gainsboroughs and the and the Monets and the Sargents and on all other those other wonderful paintings you'll see that there's not a lot of detail in them as such trying to merge all this colour to, to sit well together like this and I can tell you now I'm already starting to enjoy this painting yep I like that so far I do now that should be dry enough for me to get a small foliage brush uh, there he is. This is a small foliage brush that you can get on the website www.cly5art.co.uk. Now what we want to do is, this is the, the mix we made, which this was the Hooker's Green Van Dyke Brown. This was the dark colour, so we need to take that down Let's add in some yellow to it. Now remember when mixing greens in acrylic greens, any acrylic paint will dry two tones darker. So we need to go in now with something just a a few shades lighter so I'm just trying to get that make sure that that is going to work it's quite quite dark yet so I just want to go in a little bit lighter than that because I don't want I don't want to go in and do like four or five different layers I want to just do two or three layers just to give you the an idea of the trees and things Let's just get some mid-tones in here now, leaving the shadows in place, and, and there's some deeper shadows in there as well. Just like that. 
So just just play and have fun really and try and follow any photograph that you've got. I'm trying to go I'm just just making this up now I think because I haven't got a reference photo to work from. I have got one right it's on my iPhone and my iPhone's in the house <laughs> and I can't be asked to go and get it so this is why it's fun just to do this sometimes. I'm just trying to remember the day and it doesn't really matter as far as accuracy is concerned unless you're doing something and like I said it's photo realistic and you want an accurate depiction of what's there using the brush in different ways and you will see that this has started to disappear as it dries and gets darker so all we're doing now is getting the second layer of trees or undergrowth leaves whatever you want to call this I'm just going to mix up a bit more paint and get used to mixing paints So many trees and bushes and things. You see how that's starting to disappear? See how it's disappearing into there? So you think it's light when you look when you look at it as wet, but then all of a sudden it starts to dry and it just disappears into that background. So we can go a few shades lighter yet. But what this does, it just gives you that shadow and green effect that you're looking for. It's the same we're going to be doing the same with the hay bales. The grass is quite easy in fact. That's the easiest part. Even though it's the biggest part of the painting that's going to be the easiest part. The hay bales um, they're not going to be too bad. It's the hay bales and the trees that we've got to get right and where the time is on this particular painting. Anybody can do this. You just need to take a chance. You just need to believe in yourself. You just need to believe that you can and you will. Now you can see I put that green over that that blue there. Um just gonna add it, I'm just gonna mix a bit more paint. I put that green over that blue and You can see it's actually um, showing through a bit better. Now we need to let that dry. <laughs> this is simple as that. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up um, a small round brush. There we go, a round brush. Um, I'm going to get into some of this yellow ochre, Naples yellow type of colour. Now I'm going to use my stick. I'm just going to paint in some hay bales like this
all with the same colour for the moment. What they do, they come along, and uh, I've noticed what they do with these these things is they come along and they they stretch wrap them with big with a big stretch wrapping machine, and cover them in plastic so they don't uh, they don't get wet. I remember when I was young, I used to work on a on a farm, and we used to go out and get the hay in. And that was the day when they were actually in bales themselves. Mixing a little bit of burnt number with the Naples yellow. There you go. I think I used to get about two pounds a day, believe it or not. I'm just going to change my brush. I um, think I'll pick up, um, there we are, I got an angled short flat there. This is a size 8. Is that an angled one? don't think it is. No. Where's, uh, where's my angled short flats? I got one here somewhere. Dee, 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 dee. There we go. This is uh, size eight, angled short flat again. Um, going into this color, yellow ochre, a little bit of andite brown, a bit of Naples yellow. Just want to get this cut grass type of color. I don't want to go too light yet because. This is not going to be dead straight because it's all loose grass. Bit of my medium mix. And just follow it. The shape of this bale. You can see why I put the dark color down first now. Get a bit more yellow walk into it. I wanted a bit more yellow. I just follow that. shape a bit 
bit more brown into that now. So I'm trying to think where maybe the light is falling. Don't forget this is all rolled. So it's going to be catching light in certain points, but not in all. spend a little bit of time look how that's drying now see how that's drying how dark it is but you've got that little hint of green in there that little hint of green so what I'm going to do now I'm going to go back into some Naples yellow and just add a small amount of yellow ochre to that I'm just going to pick up a little bit more detail on this edge there like that. So we can come back to that at a later stage. I'm just trying to get some contrast in and this is where painting starts this is where the painting starts I'm trying not to overpaint it. There you go. So we've got a hay bale there. Because this is called hay bale. It's not hay bales. <laughs> no, this is actually called I'm actually calling this hay bales, but it's the emphasis on the one bale. Okay, I'm happy with that for the moment. What I want to do now again is um, I'm just going to work a little bit more on that green area there. Um, just notice something that I want to try and rectify. So I'm just going to pick up a bit of green and just put a little bit of green there like that. There we go, that's better. And darken that up a little bit more with some shadows and stuff because we need to put shadows in to give these um, definition so I'm back into my my little detail brush I'm going to bring a little bit of white because I want to bring a bit of light now into these a bales just only a couple of little marks just so I know where I think the light is going to be falling it's just give me a little bit of a because I'm gonna have to put some more green over these in a minute because once I start doing those trees again these are going to be painted over so I, I don't want to do too much detail on them but I need a little bit of a light on them there you go 
Happy, 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 happy. What I'm gonna do now is get a script, a lining, a brush. That's one of these long, thin, pointy ones. And I'm gonna go into some um, burnt umber, burnt black. And I thin that down. Like ink. Pulling my brush to a nice thin point. There we are. And I'm just gonna put a few lines in like this. Some you will see, some you won't. But we know they're there. Very, very quickly. Okay, now my drawing my attention back to the grass area and I've got my um, foliage brush that um, I've done to put the trees in place so now I want to get some greens made up for the, the grass area so we've got a little bit of yellow going into those colors that we mix the hay bales because don't forget the grass has got to be a similar type of color hasn't it so we just need to put some light in and just a few little dips and dops just on that edge like that some greener color then yellow ochre again brush down just get a bit of yellow into that now touch of green I'm just going to work a little bit, a little bit on the on the foreground. I'm just going to put in some darker colour, just with hooker's green for now. I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue into that colour. Just a touch, just a touch of ultramarine blue then, just to darken that off. Just don't forget I said I was standing by a, a gate here. And this was the long grass that hadn't been cut. So the farmer's come around and he's dropped his hay bale off. And
You can do wonderful things with these foliage brushes. If you haven't already, pop along to www.clive5art.co.uk and pick up some. I use them quite a lot on uh, landscapes and stuff. All this does is just frame the painting. Yeah. Like I said, don't be too worried about showing grass here because it's it's all short and it's um, it's just been cut. If you wanted to show a little bit of that, then just just tap like this, a little bit of light to paint. So a little bit of that um, Naples yellow. Some shadow under there in a second. Okay, I think I can draw my attention back to this these trees again. So I'm just going to bring in some more yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre now, as well. We don't want to go too dark, so we need to go a bit brighter. Let's have a look. That should work. That should work. using this foliage brush and just bring it in these trees like this think about shape think about form think about where this light could possibly hit. Don't kill your painting. That's quite easily done. And I'm not the best at painting greens because I get a, I'm a bit colour blind when it comes to green. So 
So we need to let that dry again. You can see how it's building. And hopefully you can. Hopefully you can. Now I'm going to get my 20 size 20 brush. Again, I'm going to get a little bit of hooker's green into that mix. And I just want to smooth down areas of my painting like this. I'm going to get a bit of shadow now. Which is just a smallest amount of burnt ember and black just to get a shadow there. Continue to do that where you think your shadows may fall. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow that to dry again um, and give it another 30 minutes. <laughs> right, okay, now, again, this is all about layer building. Now we need to go a little bit um, finer. We need to get a smaller brush. Where's my, there it is. I need my little um, foliage brush. So there's our green again. Let's get some more yellow to it. So we go in brighter again. And you can do this several stages, or you can get a brush, a small brush like this, a little detail brush. And if you want to, you can go in and do all the little individual marks like that, which will make it look a little bit more delicate. If you're going for that type of style, then you can do that. That can take hours and hours and hours, but we haven't got hours and hours and hours. I've got minutes and minutes and minutes. <laughs> so I'm using my foliage brush. Now, I've got to think now, because it, it, this is going to be quite bright. I want to I wanna get it bright, brighter than that. Don't forget it dries two shades darker, so I get a little bit brighter. Now I'm going to start thinking more about where this could catch on these leaves. I'm just very, very lightly tapping. Some of this is going to be in shade, some of this is going to be in bright light. 
So we know the light is coming this way because we've got a shadow under the hay bales there. And this is a great way to do foliage very, very quickly. Instead of doing little, tiny little marks, you were doing a multitude of tiny little marks in one go by using these little brushes. As I said, please check out the iCards by there and have a look at the trips that I've been doing out on the push bike. I've got a few all lined up to go. Um, as I said, I want to be visiting a lake soon. I want to paint a lake. Because I used to fish on that lake years and years ago, so it's, it's going to be worth going down to have a look because I haven't been there myself. And it's going out on a push bike is allowing me to go to all these places that I haven't been to for years and years and years. I just continue to put some highlights into these trees like what we could do now is go back into our brush now I know there was um, an old tree that was sticking out of a section here that it all died and so I'm gonna put that in because I went over to look at it and it was it was he, he was there, he was an old man and he was just stuck in a, against the green there and that's basically something that like he looked there you go. It's all broken and Sad. But he's still standing strong. And that's how he looked, like that. Or something like that. There we go. Just to give something for the eye to catch, but that's what it looked like. So if it was there, painted there. If it was there, paint it there. So I'm going to get a little bit of yellow ochre onto the same brush. I'm just going to put a few bits of yellow ochre in on a few of these trees now. Because I know everything is green. There's a couple of leaves. Couple of you could do this as an autumn painting if you wanted to. I'm going to get a little bit of Naples yellow now just to balance this off a touch maybe put a oops I was a bit thick <laughs> went a bit overboard there okay we'll just knock that in like that we made a bit of a mistake we we'll put a bit of green over that in a second all right let's try again we don't want to go too mad with this one Just a few different leaf shapes like that. There you go. Just adds a little bit of dimension to that. That doesn't look too bad now. It's fading away. Okay, so let's get this same foliage brush with some Naples yellow on. I'm just going to pull up a few lines like this. There we 
we are, that's that done. Back into my angled short flat. Now I want to work on these hay bales again. Let's get some yellow ochre, some burnt umber together. Come on, there you go. Get that. Basically, it's like a, it's like an orangey colour, that isn't it? Let's get a few different shades into this. And as we come down here, we want to get a bit darker. Darker down there. Let's get a bit of black, a bit of burned ember. Building and building and building. We need some Naples yellow now. Maybe a little bit of white to that, I think. Let's put a little bit of white to that. Let's just sparkle that up a touch. It's like there's a little bit of light just coming across the top. It's being caught. Concentrate. some light into there like that sitting back I'm just gonna have a little look at this I want a little bit brighter quite like that. I'm going to continue with our colour because I just want to lighten up that one a touch. There we are. Let's put a little bit more down that edge there. There we go. I'm going to go into my little detail brush now. I'm going to go back into some burnt umber. I'm going to get my stick. Very lightly. Just darkening these a couple up a bit. I quite like that one. I 
There we are. It's looking quite nice. That's looking quite nice. I quite like the way that is. Um, what I could do, um, I got a, another short flat here. I'm just going to get a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of black. And I'm going to get a bit of blue to it. I'm going to thin that down. A little bit of shadow colour. Put in a bit more shadow. Like that. Do I like that? Put a bit more shadow in. Yeah, quite like that. Oh, that's looking quite good. I think that looks more hay bailey than anything. Um, I'm going to pick my detail brush up I'm going to go into some hooker's green and a little bit of black because what I want to do is just correct that area there I should dry off okay then. Well, as that's drying, what I want to do now is get back into my. Um, let's put. Let's get my little short angled flat. I'm going to get some green and some blue, a little bit of yellow. Some so I'll touch a black to that. Put some leaves in. Get some lighter ones. Script lining brush. Some of this yellow ochre and maple is yellow. Put a few of things in like that. I 
Van Dyke Brown again. Just a multitude of colours that you would think there would be possibly there. I'm getting my largest um, brush now blue and green this, uh, these foliage brushes are available on the website www.clio5art.co.uk put in a bit of I copy cornflower so I copy bluebells Adding a bit of colour to the green, bring in the, the blue in from the sky. If you've run out of green, just add a bit of yellow to it, like I just did. Just mixing colours now and just put in some. Different things in. Oh, don't like that, but eh? So I'm gonna guess get the brown. Didn't like that. Okay, so let's get some yellow ochre and some black. There you go, I'll do. Quite like that. <laughs> detail brush now I want to get some red because I haven't put any red on my palette so I'm just going to put a small amount of mid red just there because all I want to do now is drop my brushes on the floor <laughs> all I want to do now is get some red and just tap in a few bit of red dots like that maybe maybe we could put a few red dots there and that but we could put a few red dots in could be flowers and things that we find in these fields I've seen loads of butterflies this day Get a bit of yellow. Doesn't matter if it goes a bit orange. Again, on the brush. We could put in a few little marks like that. better <laughs> you see these things sometimes I'll sit back after and I'll look at this and see see exactly if I can change things but um, yeah if you've liked what you've seen today please like comment share and subscribe we put a few little daisies in now 
and um, have a look at my little trips that I do around on the on the push bike um, there in the iCards as I said and please subscribe to that channel as well as this one if this is the first time you've seen these lessons I hope this has been a bit different for you as I've certainly enjoyed myself today um, painting this and it just goes to show that with a few lines and a few simple colors we can accomplish quite a lot so just pop out with your sketch pad sketch something and see what you can turn out and um, thank you very much don't forget to click the um, subscribe button down there over there are videos that um, you may like to watch as well and there's a subscription button to the website patreon or my new um, uh, uh, YouTube channel <laughs> but until next time have fun with this one I hope it was enjoyable and I'll see you then bye